The end of Dragon's elite specialization for the Elementalist is the Catalyst, and this is the beta, so a lot of things are going to change, and I feel like the Catalyst, while it is one of the things that requires the most changes out of the ones we've seen so far, it did offer a lot of different playstyles with a lot of potential, so I'm going to go over some of the mechanics of the Catalyst, some of my suggestions to make it better, and also I'm going to provide some gameplay of what I did try out. There are actually quite a few builds that I found interesting on the Catalyst, so that's one good thing about it. But let's just get started. So the Catalyst essentially gives you an F5, which is going to require you to gain energy. So whenever you hit things, you'll gain energy, and you'll lose that energy out of combat. So I kind of wish that you would keep the energy out of combat because it's a bit slow and requires so much situational combos to make use out of the Jade Sphere. But essentially what the Jade Sphere does is the longer um, it lasts is the more energy you have. And it will give quickness in the area and a static field while you're in air attunement. Then you swap to earth, it'll give a poison field and it will pulse protection and then a fire field that gives might while you're in fire attunement and water will also give resolution and a water field so this is pretty interesting because either than like a staff ellie there aren't really many combo fields that you can create to combo with yourself as an ellie so it gives a lot of potential for like resustain, for example, if I go into the water jade sphere, I can blast a lot of heals for myself, and that allows you to have sustain on an otherwise aggressive build. So another thing is that catalysts will have elemental epitome, which gives you an aura based on the current attunement you are in when you finish a combo. So it doesn't need to be like, for example, if you use fire attunement and then you create a fire aura, or a, a fire field and then you use earth 3 through it that'll give you a fire aura right but it'll also give you a magnetic aura because regardless of what the actual combo fields and finishers interaction is it'll give you an aura based on the attunement that you're in so that's pretty interesting because yeah fire and frost aura are not that amazing shocking aura and magnetic aura are pretty powerful but also, auras can be useful for, example, other trait lines in Elementalist. So you can take Zephyr's Boon and you can get a lot of Fury uptime. You can take Smothering Auras, which allows you to get a lot of Condition Cleanse. So I really don't need to run like Water Magic on the, like a very aggressive build because I can get my Cleanse from the Fire and getting tons of Auras. And I can get my protection from the Jade Sphere and resustain as well from the Jade Sphere. So it allows me to run this very aggressive power elementalist playstyle, which essentially still has survivability to it. So it doesn't feel like you know you're just gonna die instantly in any of your fights if you don't have a winning situation. So that's one thing I really liked about the catalyst. Now obviously I am not using the hammer. I feel like the hammer is probably not too PvP oriented, especially because you can't actually use any transmute. So even though the spec is very much based on auras, for example, like the dagger offhand has frost aura that you can transmute and get an extra effect, or the shocking aura can be transmuted for another effect. Hammer doesn't really have any transmutes, so it feels like the, the aura playstyle doesn't really work out too well with it. So I really didn't test it out too much. It felt like it wasn't really ready for PvP. It was more of a PvE weapon. So um, not that I don't think that hammer should be good, but it's just that I haven't really tested enough. So if you're looking for opinions on the hammer, this isn't the place to go. But I did test out a lot of different play styles regardless other than the hammer. So other mechanics of the catalyst are the vicious empowerment or the elemental empowerment which is essentially a buff that you gain when you're in combat so you'll gain three of the the stacks of the buff just for being in combat from the trait here and it will give you one percent of all of your stats bonus 
per stack up to 10. So you can get up to 10 of this and you can get it from either CCing or disabling or immobilizing an enemy or from dodging an attack. So it's pretty easy to get it max stacks on a dagger dagger build. And once you get to max stacks, if you're taking the empowered empowerment trait, you can double those stacks effectiveness. So you can get 20% bonus stats when you are at max stats. So in world versus world, I tried that out with like maximizing, like min maxing everything where I went for like a stacking sigil. I went for all infusions. I went for like best in slot food. And then I tested out with the maximum stacks and I had like over 4,000 power. So yeah, it is pretty interesting. You could also do that with a Selly build, but it wasn't too interesting with the celestial stats. So the empowered empowerment trait line is pretty interesting for like allowing a more bursty play style to exist. There is also like an aura kind of play style, which I didn't think was too useful because the damage reduction trait here, I mean, it's not really too strong. And then the damage increase trait was maybe a little bit too much investment for too little reward. So I'd like to see this trait give maybe like 5% per stack um, because you could do some crazy combos where you get like a ton of auras. So for example, um, one thing that I was testing out was like a scepter build and the scepter build essentially what you can do is you can go into earth attunement and then let's build up some of the energy here so the scepter 2 has a projectile finisher on it so what i can do is i can go into earth use the earth swap to air and then the projectiles are still being shot out go into water and then i've got three auras there you go over here you do the earth 2 you put out the jade sphere you do the two skill and just look at the auras that i get so I've got all these auras, which gives me the, well, I didn't put on the empowering auras trait. I forgot to do that, but yeah, essentially you, you understand what I'm getting at here. You can get a lot of auras and you could do like a huge burst build with this kind of trait play style, but because it was only 2%, I didn't really get too much, but yeah, you'll see some gameplay later of a play style like that. And just the, the Jade sphere kind of allowed this interesting play style. And I'll go over the build for that as well. So. Yeah, the, the catalyst traits are actually pretty interesting. I really liked it. I think that if the auras got buffed a little bit, and obviously you have the staunch auras trait, which gives you stability every time you gain an aura, it would really allow for an aura playstyle to be super powerful because obviously elementalists get pretty hard countered by CCs because you know they need to spam out their abilities. And if you interrupt their rotation, it's very punishing. And they don't have the best stun breaks, really, so CCs really stick on Ellie's. So, yeah, I kind of really like the Catalyst traits. Very, They're very interesting and powerful. The Hammer, maybe not so much at the moment. So let's go over some of the builds that I tried out. I was using a Lightning Rod Pyromancer's Puissance, kind of like one-shot play style on Dagger Dagger. And essentially the idea was just get your empowerment stacks as fast as possible by staying in combat and then CCing enemies for like a one-shot combo. So I had Glyph of Elemental Power, which would give you 25% more damage and essentially you just go in, do the burst like this, CC them and then go into your fiery blast and then your Pyromancer's Puissance would also proc and yeah, just do a lot of damage. You can get some really high numbers even in PvP where all the numbers are really neutered because of the empowerment buff here. So that was pretty interesting. You also have Tornado and Conjure Earth Shield. And even though this is like a full like Berserker build, so I was using, um, I was using Berserker or Marauder's Eagle. I was kind of more so using Marauder just so I didn't get one-shotted by a lot of things. But yeah, Energy and Cleansing Sigil on the Dagger Dagger with Eagle Rune and Marauder. And then, um, Essentially, you have cleanse because you have smothering auras. You have plenty of auras that you can transmute as well. So you have cleanse. And if you wanted protection, you could use the Jade Sphere and get protection that way. So it wasn't like a really squishy build in any way. So it was really interesting. So that was the first build that I used. 
Now, the second build that I thought was pretty interesting was a fresh air kind of catalyst. Now, the, the fresh air version that I was using tried out a little bit of the augments. So the augments are kind of interesting. Uh, the block here is maybe not as good as the earth shield. The stun break gives a little bit of endurance regeneration, but shattering ice is kind of interesting because it gives you essentially like impossible odds from the revenant, but it has a cast time. So it doesn't really fit in too well with like burst combos because you have to cast a skill inside your burst combo to get your burst to be better. So it just felt like it'd be better to just do another skill that did damage instead. So if shattering ice didn't have a cool or a cast time, then it'd be better. And also, um, yeah, so I didn't use that, but the elemental celerity was also kind of weird because you had to hit to reduce the cooldown of your current weapon skills. But by the time you get value out of that weapon skill, you essentially would already want to be rotating out of it. So I think that maybe if Elemental Celerity gave 100% reduction on the next weapon skill you use, it could allow for some interesting plays like maybe a double Gale or maybe even a double Meteor Shower and you use your Elite skill to, to make this huge play. So that could be pretty interesting. But um, yeah, as it was right now, um, I didn't really feel too much but yeah, essentially the the build um, relies on the sphere specialist trait while in air to get a lot of quickness and I will put it down and then I would use the earth 2 through it and then I would crit and then go in and do a bunch of bursts here and then maybe do a little bit of my fire burst and then go back to air get more of the quickness uptime maybe go back into water for a little bit and then go back into air and get more of that quickness so it was kind of like a quickness sharing fresh air kind of catalyst build that had um like if you had a lot of this aura set up um and the aura trait was actually buffed you could probably get a lot of burst damage or maybe the shattering ice um if they had no uh cast time on that it could be really good so yeah, this was also another fun playstyle. I was using the same kind of setup there, Marauder with um, Eagle. So that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it was yeah, it was fun. But uh, the third playstyle that I used was sort of a more like Celestial build. So in World vs. World, I was using Celestial with like Forge Runes. And in uh, PvP, I think I was using, was it um, Sage? with um the forge rune i believe or maybe divinity i don't remember but essentially the idea of this build is kind of like a duelist with the pyromancers puissance you know you've got smothering auras sort of like the fire weaver build but instead of arcane you take earth and then you go for the written in stone so you can use your signets pretty much and you still get the passive effect so you didn't get the swiftness from arcane but you didn't need it because you had the passive effect of, of signet of air and then you also had signet of earth which would immobilize which would give you the elemental empowerment buff and yeah you would just get like a lot of these stats from being able to cc and immobilize and avoid attacks it was more of a duelist and you would just do yeah, a decent amount of condi damage with the fire and the earth uh, attunements and then when you go into the jade sphere you could do some pretty nice combos to survive and sustain here so um, that was also another interesting playstyle. so really the catalyst felt like it had some really good potential and while it wasn't one of my favorite specs i think that if it gets the changes that it needs it can actually be a really fun spec to play so if you like this kind of content, then you can like the video, subscribe for more, and also check the links in the description and enjoy the gameplay. I'll see you guys next time.